This is the knife block off a linotype line casting machine. Its purpose is to adjust what's called the right knife, which is this edge along here. And that, along with the left knife, which is still mounted in the machine, trims the slugs to be the exact size that they're supposed to be. Uh, they only come out of the mold in an approximate size, and this trims them to the exact size and removes any burrs that might be a result from the casting. As you change molds, you want to be able to change the spacing of the knives, and that's what this block does. It lets you select what spacing. Right now it's set for 14-point casting. The way you change the spacing is you turn this knob clockwise, pull it out, and then that pulls out a pin which allows this selector wheel to turn, and then you select, say, 12-point, and push the knob back in to get this pin to engage again and lock this wheel, and then you, the knob will return, or should return, back to this position. The knife itself is on a sprung slide, and what's this doing? What this is doing is putting any of various adjusting screws. There's one here and one here. There's one for each of these sizes, and it puts the appropriate one in line with the slider to keep it at the right position. What this little turn does is it actually engages a cam to push the knife away a little bit more to make it easier to turn the adjustment. If it didn't do that, this would be ratcheting from one of the adjusting screws to another, which would make it sound terrible and probably work a bit rough as well. Now the reason this is off the cast right now is because this has become so stiff you couldn't turn this and you couldn't pull this out. So I took it home and have it in my shop and I've taken it all apart. This has already been taken apart and put back together again. And the rest of this video is going to show you just the putting it back together again. It will start with a picture of all the parts laid out on the table. Um, Taking it apart was a bit difficult because I didn't quite know what order to do things in and as I discovered that I sort of applied some of that knowledge putting it back together. So I'm putting it back together in a better order than I took it apart. I'm not sure I'm still putting it together in the best order possible, but uh, I might have notes on the screen suggesting a better way of doing things. So on to the parts. I'm going to reassemble this knife block from a liner type. I've pretty much stripped it all down. This is the base casting. About the only parts left here is a little pin here that stops the sector wheel from turning all the way around. There's a stop here which actually stops the, the right hand jaw of the vise. Pretty much everything else has been stripped down. So the first part to put in is the slider. This piece. So the springs for it go in here and here. But before putting it in, I want to put in the little stop peg. The, uh, the knife block has sort of a cam arrangement, so that while you're adjusting it, the, uh, the spring, this spring tension doesn't ride against all the adjusting screws. And this is the little roller that the cam runs against. Just give that a tighten. And it spins freely, and I'm going to put a drop of oil on that. The other surface where I'm going to put oil is the sliding surface here, where this piece rubs as it slides. This surface and this surface get them all nicely coated. And this piece, as I put it in, I'm going to put these two springs against these two lugs and then compress them and then push this down through here. And that'll tend to hold everything in place. Okay. Oh. Or not. And that has to be able to smooth, slide smoothly. Now, in addition to all those parts, there's a gib here which has some adjusting screws for its clearance. So I'm going to oil its surface and things just popped off again. Obviously it's not as stable as I thought. The give goes in here.
and once the locking screws are not locking screws, the adjusting screws for the gear will stop it from sliding back and forth. Now in order to stop this thing from popping up, I'm going to put on the retainer plates. Here's one of them. This is the smaller one which fits on the side that doesn't use the gib. And when I disassemble this there are these plastic shims here which set the clearance of these retainer plates. So I'm just going to return them to where they were. If I can get them to stay put. They curled a bit after I peeled them off. After, the, after they dried a bit and the oil came off them. Okay. And this goes on here. These screws appear to me to, they look like they're made of bronze. Or maybe they're just copper coated, I don't know. They have a sort of a coppery color to them, but I really doubt that they're actually solid copper. That'll be enough to stop this slide block from hopping out now. Same block on the other side with its shim. This one's a purple one. Very nice purple color. And there's a little bit of oil here. Just a drop of oil to get the shim to stay put. I don't want too much there because they'll tend to hold the shim up until the oil squeezes out of the, out of the gap. I really don't want that. That means the screws will come loose after a while. And then I verify again that this piece can move and it's very tight. <clears throat> there we go. Actually, now it's okay. Just took a moment for lubricant to work its way in. So it moves quite smoothly now. It has play this way because I haven't put the adjusting screws in on the gib yet. So next is the adjusting screws. It's a screw and then there's a nut on it to tighten it up, tighten up when it uh, has the right setting. Once I get this part way in, I'm going to feel for the right spot. I'll be able to feel there's a little indentation on the back of the gib. I'll be able to feel when I'm in the right spot with the adjusting screw. Except I was turning it by the nut, and now the nut has been turning, and not the screw, so the screw hasn't been going in. So now I give it a turn with the screwdriver. Okay, I feel it going into the into the into the little indentation of the gib there now. The locking nuts on these are actually kind of seized up. I better I better work on loosening those up. So for these gib screws here so you can see them, you're supposed to tighten them up to the point where you can just barely move the slide here. So right now I've got this one snugged up. I can't even see the slot there. There it is. 
right now this is moving okay. Now I give this a little more tension, then this stops moving. So I'm going to back this out to that point, and then I'll tighten the lock nut. and then just double check that the thing still moves. That's pretty good. Now I'll adjust the other one the same way. That looks good. I should say it feels good. have to hold the screw while you turn the nut so the adjustment doesn't wander on you. And one more check just to make sure this moves smoothly. And it does. The next job is to put on this cam. This is the one that pushes the knife closed a little bit so that this sector wheel can rotate without the stop ratcheting against all these screws. And now I realize I'm getting ahead of myself because I can't put this in yet. The next piece that has to go on is actually the sector wheel. The next step is to put on the selector disc, which is this part here. It's got all these adjustment screws for each knife setting. This slot has to fit over this peg. The whole disc is held on by this hollow shoulder bolt. And when you put the disc on, we want to get these shortest screws at the bottom here because the long screws will try pressing on the slider. And that just means you have to fight to get the thing assembled. So we assemble it with this end of the groove on the pin. And it just sort of drops into that position. And then you can put on the shoulder bolt. Once you get things lined up. There we go. And you still have to press on the disc a bit because otherwise it ends up a little at an angle and then the shoulder bolt doesn't really want to thread in very well. That's snug now and I just need a one inch socket. Tighten that up. So it'll rotate grudgingly here, but eventually as you turn it what happens is the set screws, one of them ends up hitting the slide here and it won't go any further. So the next task is to put on the cam that keeps the slide clear of those set screws as you're actually doing the adjustment. And that's this cam. Now this is held on by a taper pin that's inserted through this hole and into here and through a hole in the shaft here now I found it very hard to take the taper pin out because it was just perfectly flush with the shaft here and I couldn't really figure out what size punch I needed or exactly where to aim so I ended up filing a little flat and looking at it with a magnifier and then I could see the circle at the end of the taper pin and knock it out I've shortened the taper pin now, so when I put it in, it should not be flush, it should be set in at this end, so it'll be much easier to knock it out next time. It'll be easier to find where that should go. So this goes behind this little roller, so I have to advance the 
Oh, this is going to be tricky. I have to get the slide pulled out a bit. And I'm going to do that using a screwdriver. And then, there we go. So now the cam is dropped in behind the little roller here. Of course, you can see the spring tension is making the cam slide all over the place. So what I'm going to do is turn this to relieve the spring tension. Fight with it a bit more. There. Okay, now I'm going to have the the longer ones of these adjusting screws are holding this slide out of trouble, out of the way. So I put this in front of the shaft. Sorry, in front of this bushing, the, the, the core of this hollow shoulder bolt forms a bushing for the shaft here. And I also want to make sure I'm putting the shaft in the right way for the taper pin because this hole is tapered and the pin does start in that way. So this is the orientation I want. This goes through here. As it emerges on the other side, I want it to come there. And now you see it's come through. And I want to find the actual taper pin hole. I'm just using a punch to probe for that. And I'm turning the shaft a bit. I'll sort of put it, put the shaft about halfway through where the punch can find it. And then I put the taper pin in place. feel it's already engaged in the hole. I can't really turn the shaft anymore. I'll get a punch and a hammer. Knock that in. And that's not going anywhere now. So now I can demonstrate how this cam works. The knob has a slot here which engages in this pin, and as you turn the cam, it moves the slide out. And this arranges that the, the anvil that pushes against these screws is clear when you're trying to actually adjust the selector. And this should all turn nice and smoothly now. This, this is the part that wasn't working before, and now it turns quite nicely. So, on to the next step. It's kind of handy here to use a vise to just clamp this by the selector disc at this point. So, we want to use the cam now. I should have done this when the knob was on. to push the slide as far as it'll go. I'll make it easier to do the rest of the installation. And the next part to install is this. This is the part where the knife actually goes. And it's got a locator pin that goes into this hole on the slide. held by these two screws. And as I tighten the screws, the pin will pull home.
and I can see right now that this thing is not seated properly. In addition to the pin, it's got a, a groove. Keep it aligned. actually seated in that groove this time. It was obviously crooked looking at it a moment ago. Get that nice and tight. The next part is this extension arm. This seems to be just intended to provide more stability to this because there's another set of jaws back here or another set of guides back here that will guide this stem and this piece here really it has no locator pins but it is a bit of a snug fit in here so you got to tap it in a bit and hope that you actually have it lined up with the screws and I seem to Again, these look like sort of bronze or coppery screws. So these are all tight now. And the next piece put on is this little plate here. This appears to be just a little a pointer, a sort of indicator against the scales on these two screws. These screws are used to finding, fine adjusting the position of the knife in particular for getting it parallel to the left knife so you get the slugs that are the same thickness all the way across. And these are little tiny stubby screws that don't quite want to go into their holes. There we go. Here's one. I originally thought this was some sort of detent for these screws, but that doesn't make sense. Those screws already have a lock nut on them to stop them from moving. They don't need detents. But this, what this does give is a scale. And it probably measures, it's probably marked in thousandths of an inch. Because it looks like it goes from 0 to 25, and it might be a 40 threads per inch screw. Next piece to go on is this bracket. And this provides the more stabilization for the slide because it has shoes back here on the back side of this bar. And this is just held on by two rather large headed screws. And this probably needs a drop of oil on it as well. Right, there. that's another sliding surface. And we'll put the knob on and just rotate it a few times just to exercise that. Of course, nothing's going to happen now because I have it in the vise. here for a sec. Okay, so if we turn this to the smallest setting and we're back up the cam. Okay. There. It's, normally you can't turn it so far that it snaps shut like that. So the next things to add I guess is the knob and all its fittings.
So the knob has this little hook, where this hook is what's actually lifts, what actually lifts the locking pin out of its locked position. And again, there's a little locator pin there. These guys just went nuts with locator pins on things that didn't really need them. And one problem with this whole mechanism is there's actually no oil hole to get oil into this shaft here or where this knob is supposed to be able to turn over the shaft. Find out which hole is which here again. This piece fits into these two screw holes. Okay, so the locking pin has to be loaded on with the knob. Here. It goes there, and now we have to find the spot where the locking pin will actually lock in. Because I have things all turned around funny here. Okay, now the locking pin's in its hole. Next thing is this piece. This is the stop that the knob is normally stopped against. This also, there's a little pin there, you have to make sure it's in the sector of this knob. This knob is here so you can release the selector even if you can't turn the cam for it. This will happen if you have a, a slug jammed in the knife. See, normally this knob is turned uh, to its clockwise position and you cannot lift up this knob when this is turned to the clockwise position. This lets you turn this up and of course normally it wouldn't fall off like that. And then you can select a different position forcibly And finally, this piece here acts as sort of a cam to only allow you to do things when they want you to be able to do them. And again, this has a couple of locator pins and some screws to hold it on. We have to put the pointer on here. Here's the pointer, and it won't go on right now because there's um, these set screws in the way. So we have to release this, and I have to see why this doesn't look like it's working. It's because it's there. I have to turn this to that position and pull it out, and then it's free to turn. And then you push it back in and it pops back. I had this knob, this little knob here in the wrong position which let me pull it out. I shouldn't be able to, which confused me. So now we can put the pointer back on. So normal operation here is you turn this to this position pull it out, rotate this to the size you want, so like right now we actually have a 10 point mold on the machine, so I set this to 10 point, push this back in, so the, the retaining pin here goes back into its hole, and we let go this pops back, and because this knob is turned clockwise, you can't pull this out to change it. And of course there's also, this is another spot, there's no good way of oiling this. When it's all assembled, there's no oil hole in this handle, and this was part of this was again this knob turning on this shaft to do that camming thing was one of the bits that was all seized up, which prompted me to take this apart in the first place. And I think I need a bit of oil here because this should that should snap back on its own. I now have this adjusted lubricated so that the spring actually causes this to return like it should. Uh, I had not lubricated behind the cam here. So I just, let's put some oil in there. Oiled here. A little oil where this hook 
hooks onto the uh, end of the locking pin. And now everything seems to run fairly nicely. Uh, the astute amongst you will realize that I put this pointer on backwards the first time. I reversed it now. So the next thing to install is the actual knife. You can get things in shot here. As you assemble this block, it gets harder and harder to hold it in a sensible manner. So the knife is held on primarily by these two bolts, which are 9 16 heads. They're kind of shallow heads too, so they're a little hard to... It's easy for a wrench to slip off them. So we get these started. Now the, uh, the knife actually backs up against these two adjustment screws and there's two other screws like this with springs that go in here and also thread into the back of the knife. And they hold the knife tight against the adjusting screws. sort of behind this pointer finger but it still goes in fairly easily and I assume you can find which way the slot is oriented you can get it started too. I'm going to assume that the knife was already adjusted properly so I'm not going to fool around with these adjustments I haven't moved them I haven't unlocked them and I'm just going to tighten these bolts Again, these are sort of shallow headed nuts, so you have to watch that the socket wrench doesn't just slip off them. So I'm holding the socket wrench in place with my left hand and sort of levering against here with my right to get the, the torque I need. So that's the knife. And then the last thing, well, last few things, is these two screws, which are the adjustment for the left knife. Now, taking this apart, I've obviously lost that adjustment, but when I reinstall this knife block, I'm just going to snug these up until they're touching where the left knife is, because I haven't actually moved the left knife. I haven't even unbolted it. So I'll just put these in part way. And the last thing to put on is this guide here. This forms the right hand side of the channel that the slug comes out of. Now the weird or weird strange annoying thing is that this is held on by two flathead screws here to the moving jaw or to the moving slide and then this plate goes on top. This plate is sort of fitted to be loose and the spring pushes on the back of it and it has screws from the back here which are almost impossible to get at. You need a very stubby offset screwdriver or a very long skinny screwdriver and you just use it at an angle. So here we go. This piece has two little locating pins in it, at least my version, which go into these two holes. pair of flat headed screws, hold it on. There's also a spring that goes here to press on that spring plate. It's also held on by a uh, flat head screw, a slightly shorter one than the other two. part is the spring plate itself. It goes on here. It actually 
has these notches that go in a groove on the back of the knife itself. But these screws that hold it on are actually little tiny shoulder screws. You have a little shoulder there, so they don't actually tighten down on this completely. But, as you can see, even with the knife, well I'm going to set the knife for the smallest um, slug size. Allow will give you the most clearance possible in here to get a screwdriver in. Because what that does is that moves this plate away from this main body casting. But i got to get in there and get this screw started. I have to find the hole for the screw first. I'm going to try using a really long screwdriver to get it in. It would have been so much easier if this spring plate actually had holes in the front of it. So I could attach this side guide and the spring plate together first and then just put the assembly on to the side to the end of the uh, slide but no they didn't do it that way there okay I got one screw started now I have to try and get the second screw in and I have determined that the ideal word to describe this process is excruciating I got it started? Yes, yes I do. Good. And this is an even worse reach for this screwdriver. So I'm sort of in this weird offset screwdriver-ish action. I think that's, oh, that's not tight yet. I keep thinking it's almost tight. Okay, I think that's the tight spot. That's where it gets tight. And this is really bad for the screw, but fortunately it does not have to be that horribly tight. It's not exactly a high stress component. And this piece here then should be free to move around a bit. And has a bit of spring to it too. And the only thing left put on are there's four of these locating dowels, locating pins, which position this thing properly when it's installed on the machine. We just have to be tapped into their holes here. I'll just get them started and I'll tip the knife block up so I can get a better strike with the hammer. I can pound them through from the other direction instead. using a punch here that's actually bigger than the diameter of the pin. This one here can't go on from this side because this casting's in the way. This casting's in the way. So put this one, get this one started. here and then I can get through the slot between the workbench and the hooks. I'm going to drive this pin till it's flush to the surface of the casting here. I believe that's the way it was originally. Okay, so now I can drive this pin all the way through. Not all the way through. Till it's flush, not all, not all the way through. And this fourth pin in this corner, this corner, 
has to be put in from the other side. There's just no way to get past the casting here, really. I don't think so, anyway. Uh, you put it in, you can see it's angled. And there's no way that's going to go in without bending the pin. So it has to go in on this side. So I have to find a comfortable way to hold this thing. There we go. And again, I'm just feeling when it ends up flush with the casting at the back. So that is the finished knife block and I have to watch I don't slice my hand on the knife. It's oriented like this on the, on the machine with this chute pointing down. And again the adjustment is you turn it clockwise a bit, pull it, turn the wheel to the setting you want such as 10 point and then let go of the knob, push the knob back in so it pushes this locking pin back in and the spring will turn the knob back to this position. And now the slide that's holding the knife is resting against the appropriate one of these set screws for the 10 point width. And this cam is not acting at, at all. It's, there's a gap, actually a tiny gap between this cam and the little roller that follows it. 